you, buddy. Oh, you're upside down, buddy. Hey. Get him, get him, get him, get that claws out. Pass him, go, get him, get him, get him, buddy, get him. Alrighty, I don't know how many that is, you can probably count, uh, but that's today's little stash of. Um, Figs every in uh, three days or so. I'll go and pick some more figs. <laughs> You've probably already seen the video, but I've since found out after years of hearing that um, goji berries are uh, closely related to, but not box thorn, now I find out from Goji Plants Australia that indeed when you buy Goji berries often enough they are quite literally a mix of box thorn berries and the bush type of Goji berry and the vine type of Goji berry Barbarum I think is the bush type and then there's no I forget what the vine one is um, but yeah, I believe they're usually dried. I also believe I have a wood heater going most nights. Um, and if I set things up correctly, I've actually got a pot that's got little legs on it uh, that I could sit on top of the wood heater or maybe even... The wood heater doesn't get really hot on top, so I could probably just put a bit of lemon, aluminium foil on top of that and um, dry some of these out. I have occasionally been getting ulcers in my mouth recently. This always happens when I have a lack of, what's his name, uh, vitamin C. Basically when I don't eat enough greens. Um, <laughs> I had a big heap of vitamin C and calcium supplement. It tasted like absolute shit. It tasted like bloody plaster. Um, but, you know, it's a little bit stupid, I think, in a way. You know, like, I've got a plum tree right here. I ate enough of the plums. I've got figs coming off right now. I've got what's essentially sold as goji berries, although not a... Well, they reckon there's very little difference between the fruit, even though it's not actually a goji plant. They sell it as goji berries. And, you know, a Madeira vine, which, by the way, in case you can see, it looks a little bit hazy and whatnot. Yeah, it's actually coming into flower. And uh, this, I know for a certain, is fine to eat, and I've eaten it before. And uh, I'm sort of probably not supposed to have it. I don't think, oh, I think it is a weed here. It's a real trouble in New South Wales to the point they've released a bug from South America, which destroys the whole lot because it eats it, and its whole life cycle revolves around this plant. Uh, but yeah, it's coming out in flower. And now uh, I've seen one's a hell of a lot bigger than this, the flower things. But all the same, that's closely related to Indian, <coughs> Indian one running spinach, except it has a bad aftertaste. But it's fine to eat, and I've eaten it before. And here I am getting ulcers from not having enough greens. Seems a little ridiculous. So anyway, I've already eaten these before, um, and I may make a point of picking more and drying it out, and you say, oh, well, you're stupid to poison all the other ones down the hill. Not really, you know, because I've still got some near those cypress trees you can see through there, um, surrounding them, and then I've got the ones there, 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 right up around the front of the house, right past where the old skyline wagon was, Wherever there is flipping cypress trees, there is box thorn. There's more around my house than I could ever blasted pick in a shit fit. So I don't think it's really 
that much of an issue because it's probably about 20-fold what I could bloody well eat anyway. Um, but yeah, I suppose I should start to make a little bit of use of said berries. And uh, a lot of them are starting to oh, be stuffed. Little holes in it. This one's got holes in it. Here's there's some bug that's beaten me to it. At least on that plant. Not to worry, I'm not short of plants, but I think it's they're all getting near the end of their season, so I probably should just pick a bunch and dry them, and then I've got a few for later. Yeah, I've got a few there. They might look like a fair bit, but they're all actually only one deep, which is the whole point. Uh, so I can get them to dry. I haven't been really cranking the wood heater flat out. Um, you know, obviously, in the colder times in winter, when it, you know, drops to freezing or near freezing, that's when I really crank it. But it hasn't been too bad, so I haven't been whacking in really heaps of wood. Um, so if I sit this, which obviously it sits on its own pretty well anyway, if I sit this on the outer edge of the heater, not near the stove pipe, but on the outer edge, uh, it should just dry them out because it doesn't get as warm on the outer edge as it does near the stove pipe. But uh, if you're wondering what happened to the tinfoil hat, well, now you know. Yeah, there, uh, next to the cardboard house. And uh, this big stack of wood, sort of on the right side there, right you know, in the gap there between the cardboard house and the stack of wood, there used to be a big frame. Uh, and it was like a big bloomin' oh, bench thing. Steel frame, RHS. Come out of a, who knows where, probably a shop or something. Anyway, sitting against that, um, my dad's since taken the frame, but sitting against that were all these. And, uh, like, you know, some decent bits of glass there. Most of it is actually shower screens and crap down here. I think, probably not, because they're actually steel frame, but there were some shower screens, one of which um, has ended up on the front of the veranda, but I just realised, so I like a stack of doors as well. And all I've done was just basically get these off the frame and sit them down here just so my father could take the frame for the uh, good steel that was in it. Um, it was like 20 mil or inch um, square steel, and there was a lot of it, because uh, it was a decent size. But anyways, I'm just thinking I need a blooming hook on the back of the door in the bathroom and I might just go and strip all the hinges and all the other fittings off and basically look, it's all it's all turned to shit. So I might get sorted today and chuck all of that into um, a bonfire heap or something like that because a lot of these are just that hollow core shit. Actually, I've got a bunch of stuff here, just been mucking around, putting another tree guard on one that come off. Yeah, yeah, it's all hollow. Some of these you got like this honeycomb uh, cardboard shit inside, but a lot of these older ones, they just didn't even worry with that uh, because they had, see there's another beam there that goes across, and they had enough sort of bits of wood going side to side that they didn't really need the honeycomb, whereas the other ones Often I think they only got a little one at the top and a little one at the bottom and then they whack that cardboard honeycomb shit in the middle. Um, but those of you who have seen uh, doors kicked apart or whatever, especially in white trash areas, have probably uh, seen the honeycomb stuff. But yeah, I don't know when my father's getting here. I'm trying to make a go of doing a, another few bits and pieces while I'm waiting for him to come. And uh, he's got to get a particular thing and we've got to pull a few things out with the tractor as well. Hmm. Old tank base, the original one they made, put all rocks underneath and that's where their uh, guttering came off. You may be able to hear a tractor gun in the background. We had a particular item here, it finally got moved. <laughs> Damn thing was on like a chassis and it used to have wheels welded onto it and I knew my uncle basically rolled a tyre off and completely flattened the rim on these wheels because I was there when he'd done it 
Um, and then all of a sudden I come back and I noticed that that's got perfect wheels. Well, it turns out it was a friggin' dolly. And we went to tow this thing and, of course, the dolly just starts to slide from under the frame as we're trying to get it on the tow hitch. So, thank God for cordless drills. Um, drilled a hole through and I had a couple of bolts that I'd, of course, recently been going through for reattaching the door and I had these ones that were too short. Uh, but they're rather thick, like they're about three eighths thick or something like that. And uh, well, you know, got the right size drill bit, whack the bolts in, and we actually drilled holes in the dolly and bolted it to the damn uh, frame, which also already had a few bol uh, few holes drilled in it previously, uh, but the dolly didn't. So just whack some holes through, whack some bolts on, butter bing. I don't know if you can hear it, but there he goes driving off into the distance. So I'm going to put these drills inside and uh, <laughs> along with her little air compressor and I've got something else that I am taking back that I will show you as well that he wants for all the good metal out of it. So I've been sitting on blocks of wood so it's a few more bits of fire wood that we're sitting on. Oh uh, yeah. Anyway, I put my stuff away and I'll show you the other thing. Uncle used to have this on his sign post when I found my 5th, 16th bit the other day. I ripped it off his old uh, front post that was here. Of course, this is a treated pine one that's only been put in a few months ago. So I belted that one back on. The old post is going for firewood. Um, oh, man. These used to be toolboxes or fire trucks. The back was pretty rusted because it was laying in the dirt. Oh, that's what I bloody thought it was. Blooming light fitting. Right up there. So you can see inside your toolbox. Anyway, the back was pretty rusted, so we shook that off. And, um, the rest of this, as you can see, it's pretty reasonable thickness steel. It's like about one eighth of an inch or something. So, my father wanted that purely because he knew it had reasonable steel and we'll just throw the uh, rest of it in scrap metal because it was all rusted because it was lying directly against the dirt. I've got a blasted thing over here too. These are apparently recyclable I was told when I was working for the guy who had the skips. Um, one of the cars had decided to go arse over tit on the hill here because everybody who's got a Japanese import has got to flog the shit out of it up this hill and then wonder why they go flat on their ass. I'll cut that up with a reciprocating saw and chuck it in the bin because it's only I'm going to go through the bullshit to recycle it. Um, yeah, plantain there. Anyway, we've also got to get a, another frame that's it's like used for lifting out car engines or something. That's out in the paddock, so I've got to drop this off and then go get the other frame. Alrighty. Well, we got the uh, frame out of the ground. As you can see, it sort of went from here through to here. There's another big lump there. It was actually longer than the trailer. Um, and I've just come back and... A few little bits of uh, firewood. In a way, I've been keeping all of these smaller bits just for starting the fire, as opposed to just chucking them straight in bonfire heaps. Uh, so anyway, past those just droppers, a couple of big ones there. They've got a couple other big ones uh, oh, against the roadside, and I just flip this around and go get them. Be off home. It always seems I'm distracted by blooming firewood almost every time. Anyway, my father's uh, over there with the tractor getting that homemade grater shitstorm made out of all the eye beams and all that that I showed a while ago. It was hidden in the grass uh, near my end dam, but oh god, I don't like this. Yeah. The power lines are making some weird noises. Flaming on gritters. Ah, just got to get this stuff here. Um, 
before I do that, have a look at this. How is that for a piece of wire? Like, tie up a friggin' elephant with it. Holy smoke, that's big. That is closing in on a quarter inch. It's bigger than one-eighth of an inch diameter, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Stuff your relatives got up to, eh? It's a bit of a dropper I got back there that was actually... Not what it is, I'll just show it. It's bloody bizarre. Obviously one of my grandfather's old ones, dare I say, he might have nicked it off a table or something. It's like pine or something, but it's bloody hexagon. <laughs> oh, like I say, the improvisation my relatives got up to was pretty full on. Okay. I assume you can see some of these are wrinkled and some aren't. I'm getting a bit screen dazzled, so I can't see the screen too well. Um, some of the bigger ones didn't quite dry out properly. It looks like they did leach a bit of juice out. Um, but yeah, you know, this might have been a little bit too hot. They may be a little bit too big. Uh, this just was set on the top of the wood heater. Um, you know, dehydrators. I don't know if they just use a heating element in the base or they actually blow hot air. I think they just use a heating element in the base, to be honest. Um, my sister's got one, but I never looked at it. But anyway, when you buy them in the packets, they all shrivel up like that, uh, generally. But of course, you know, the smaller ones are going the right way. Oh, and the bigger ones haven't. I'll give them a shot. Yeah, it's not fully dehydrated, it's sort of a bit like dehydrated apple, it's a bit sort of soft still, not like dry and crispy like banana. It's been dehydrated. Hmm. Not gonna believe this, it tastes like camera caramelised onion. Those of you who have Sort of, yeah, a bit gooey like a blooming syrupy toffee sort of thing. Yeah, it's like very nicely car caramelised onion. I know the French camera, camera onion, you know what I'm trying to say. Seems a lot of French and Italian, they know what they've got to do to cook a particular food to make it taste nice. And let me tell you, with the background of British culture, the British know how to cook something to make it taste just as drab as shit. Shit, that is good. Oh, you're going to poison yourself. Uh, not likely. No, oh, fuck, I'm going to eat a lot of you. Hmm. Anyway, I would go do something real and so just eat all these. How's this? Can't touch him because he'll freak. Praying mantis. The size of him. Shit. Honestly, with his arms outstretched there, he'd be about. Oh. It's more than four inches, maybe four and a half inch. You know, praying mantis, which is what this thing is, it's not a stick insect. It's one of the few creatures I've seen that will actually turn its head, a few insects I've seen that will turn its head and watch where you go. It's one of the things that is consciously, very conscious
of you being right there in front of it. I'll turn the camera and I'll watch. He'll probably move his head. See? His head's moving. Follow the camera. Now turn it back again. See? His head's moving. He's watching the camera. And his head's moving with the camera. These are the few insects that I'll walk past a tree and want to be on the tree and the little head will be following me as I'm walking past. Well, in actual fact, a lot of them are on my small trees that I've been watering at the front, which is good because they kill all the other bugs. And these are bugs that prey on other bugs. And I'll be out there with the watering can and I'll walk past and a little head will be turning as I walk past <laughs> to go up to trees that are further up to water them. It's one of the few insects I know that is seriously conscious of people being near him. He might fly off because he, I better not take my finger at him. You watch. A little head of turn. The camera. Turn again. Hey. If I turn. Ah, uh, he's not going past that point, but he'll... I think he's realised the camera's not going to attack him, so now he's staring directly at me. And if I don't move, <laughs> he's going to keep staring. No, he's not doing it now. But anyway, you could see there before, as I'd move the camera around, a little headed follow. Now he's just staring directly at me. Come across these on occasion, mealworm. They're usually the larvae to certain sort of bug. Um, you get these king meal worms, they're like friggin' huge. And uh, they usually feed them to uh, lizards and stuff like that. There's a place I went for a job at that actually bred the king ones. So the king ones are like shit. They're just. <sighs> they're about three eighths of an inch thick, you know, but this is only. Oh, gee. One-eighth of an inch thick, I'd say. Yeah, about that. And uh, anyway, snipping out a few box on sprouts here, and he come up. Now, I'll show you how you get chicks to, uh, women to really take an interest in you. You do things like this on YouTube. Usually that tastes like peanut butter. That one just... Yeah. Tasted like real butter with a pretty bad aftertaste. But you know, when you consider he's just probably... chewing the remains of a dead box thorn, like you can't really uh, expect a glorious taste. But anyway, you do that young men and you, you'll get women chasing you like there's no tomorrow. Especially if you do it on YouTube. Or in real life in front of uh, real girls.